Juice World is easily one of the most talented musicians I've ever heard. Most talented. Um, when he does rock, he sounds legit. He sounds like a legit rock star. You know, when he raps, you know, you you know from his freestyles, he's the real deal when it comes to rapping. Um, him merging the two worlds together, great. He's outstanding at melodies. Um, and as disturbing as his content is, uh, it's still engaging to listen to. Believe it or not, as I would say, Goodbye and Good Riddance is probably still his best work to date. Probably. Um, and I think some of it, the reason I feel that way is because I was kind of new to the guy. I didn't really know him. So like he surprised me to a certain extent. I think this is next, his, his, his next best work. Legends Never Die to me is, is, is literally embodies like the potential that he has. And I think he just was in a surprisingly, interestingly, was in such a groove on that album. Whoever put the album together did such a fantastic job because it almost sounded like those were finished songs. I, I would not be surprised if they said the majority of those songs were already finished. The only one that sounds like they may have added him was the one with Trippy Red, Tell Me You Love Me. That sounds a little choppy, but all the other ones sound so finished. And then um, on top of that, I, I just feel like the melodies he, he puts on the album, fantastic. The beats are so emo trap emotional, rock emotional, like, just everything of the, the album just flowed really well. I do wish he rapped more. I will say that. I do wish that he had more harder tracks. Um, but uh, I, I love the album, man. I, I, well, let me not say I love it. I say I think it's a very, very good album and um, very impactful. And I think this album's interludes and intros are fantastic. The outro was fantastic. The outro, the interlude, the... the intro, everything was fantastic. I, I think it was just really well put together. Yeah, um, I, I would agree with that, man. What, what kind of grade would you give this, though, overall? I would give it closer to a B. I mean, every day is, is rising in, in terms of, like, how I feel about it. I'm liking it more and more and more. I listen to it, but it's, I would say it's like a B. Okay. I think it's a little too long. Also, I think it's you know, here and there, it's, it's, it's not necessarily like multifaceted, but it's to me a, a, a very powerful body of work. Yeah, I can, uh, I can get jiggy with that. Um, I, think, I think that, um, I think Juice World was, you know, and, and, and speaking of those interludes that you were mentioning, which were phenomenal on the album, um, there was one in particular, I cannot remember the, the name, but it was, it was a, a bunch of clips of people basically speaking highly of Juice World. Um, and, and, and I thought uh, G Herbo said something very poignant, which I remember when he said it, because he was actually on The Breakfast Club. He had an interview and he was talking about Juice World, especially after he, he passed. Um, and he mentioned that Juice World was like the biggie of his generation. Um, you know, those were words that G Herbo said and while I'm sure, you know, people compare, you compare anybody to Biggie, there's going to be a whole lot of people who are just off the rip going to disagree. However, I do think I understand exactly where G Herbo was coming with those sentiments, because I do actually agree with him. I think, I think Juice World was only at the, at the, at the beginning of his career. Oh, I'm talking about the same way in which Biggie technically only dropped two albums. People forget that. People forget Biggie dropped two albums, two, and he was able to have such a long lasting effect on the genre for, for this long, even still to this day, that people revere him in, in, in so many different ways. I, I truly believe Juice WRLD is going to have a long lasting effect on hip hop, especially the newer generation, for a very long time because of all the things he brought to the table musically. I mean, to, to see someone who, with a with such a broad ability 
to create melodies. I think, I think that, um, I think, I think that's the core difference between this generation of hip hop and the previous one, right? It's, it's all melody driven. You know, there's a reason why they say hip hop, hip hop uh, artists are singers now, right? And the singers want to rap now. Like there's such a, there's such a, a fine line between rappers and singers now because everybody's creating melodies all over the place. I think Juice World did that shit so effortlessly. So with his approach to making music, I don't think we're ever going to forget what he was able to do. So I just wanted to point that out there just to start out. But jumping into the actual album, um, Legends Never Die. What a title of an album. Um, ironic, he, he made a song called Legends Never Die when Tentacion died, paying homage to him. And it was funny, not funny, ironic, I should say, that um, in that song, he stated a whole bunch of things that were very cryptic, which, I mean, if you listen to any Juice World song, you're probably going to get weirded out. If you're not familiar with his content, you're probably going to get weirded out pretty quickly. He says a lot of things very consistently that are pushing the boundaries of politically correct. Like, wait, should somebody be saying this? Like, wait, 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 is he really in trouble? Like, like, wait, 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 does he really mean that? You ask, there's a lot of questions that you can really ask when you listen to a Juice WRLD project. But going back, like I said, he paid homage to XXXTentacion in that song. And he basically said, yo, we're not living past 21. He said that. Juice WRLD said he said, fuck a, fuck a 25-year-old club. We're not, we not even making it past 21. I mean, to, to say foreshadowing, to say that was just so unfortunate of the, the situation, him losing his life, man. It, it's, it's sad to see a dude who, who had just, I believe he had turned 21. Sorry, he passed seven days after, if, if I'm not mistaken. He passed seven days after he turned 21. Man. Legends Never Die is a fitting title to this album. I thought the album as a whole was very good, very well put together. Um, you talked about it. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually has about 10 albums finished in the cut. Uh, there, there, were, there were mentions in the, on those interludes that I was talking about earlier where the producers that have worked with him, sorry, label mates, artists, they were speaking very highly of him. They said, the way Homeboy even made music was, was legendary. They said he would make three songs to the same beat and tell the producer to pick which hit you want. Like, you either just pick. I don't even, he's like, he just kind of goes in there and he just, he just goes off the top and just makes a hit song off the rip. That is one of the most impressive things I've ever heard. Um, and again, that cannot be, that cannot be understated. I'm telling you right now, it's those type of qualities that made Juice World the legend that I believe he is. And uh, for somebody to touch the game, to touch the people in such a short amount of time is, is super impressive, man. So I, I would give this album a beat. I don't even want to get into the songs, uh, you know, uh, song by song, because the more and more I hear posthumous albums, the more and more I don't even feel like rating them. Because it's like, it's like, well, yeah, I can give it a grade, but at the end of the day, <laughs> we're just here for we're just here celebrating the person, dog. We just here we just here to consume this new music from the person that's no longer here. Fuck it, you know, Juice World. I'm sure they go. He has a whole bunch of albums that's gonna come out in over time. So I'm all for it. I love Juice World's music, um, and 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 I'm and I'm excited to hear. I'm excited to continue to listen to this album because I heard it about two to three times, and every single time I heard it, it was it just hit every time. You Every know, single time. Uh, uh, there, um, I want to say something that bothers me. Yeah. Um, you brought it up earlier a little bit, but you know how another way you can compare his work to Biggie? Um, both of them had infatuations with dying. Like, Correct. both of them talked about their death quite a bit. Like, it's Correct. disturbing. And for a lot of the people that a lot of the major hip hop artists, think about all the people that have passed away prematurely in the last couple of years. ex Tentacion, in fact, we talking about death. Uh, Mac Miller, Mac Miller, an infatuation with talking about how he's spiraling downwards 
and like just kind of like foreshadowing his downfall. Nipsey Hussle, his last single, he's talking about if I would have died at 33. Um, uh, you can go down the line. What is this? Like, what is what what type of craziness is this? I get it. I get it. Like, you want to be as real and as as much of an open book that you can be, mm-hmm. but it's like it's it's crazy. It's disturbing. It's it's really disturbing how much these people that are dying they're kind of like infatuated with the, their their own downfall, you know, and so. It, it makes the music a lot more riveting. I get it, but it, it's it's it, it makes me more and more think that death is on your tongue, like a lot of Facts. times. Facts, you know. What and, I'm saying? And, and, to, and to your and to your point, I've always had a problem with that as well. Let's just take Juice World for example, right? First album, which you said it. I I like that album still, man. And I, I would say that's probably my favorite still. Maybe this Legends Never Die will overtake it. Who knows? But I, I do have a special place in my heart for, for goodbye and good riddance. Just look at what that's saying. Goodbye and good riddance. Now, you could argue we're looking too deeply into this, right? Okay, you know, what does he really mean by that? You know, but <laughs> goodbye and good riddance. Now, you could say, okay, that's not that bad. Let's look at the second one. Death Race for Love. Why is, why is he talking about death? The whole, it's all of his content is about death, majority of it, I should say. And then, of course, this one, Legends Never Die. He's obviously passed. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem, man. I'm, I'm a true believer in the concept of your thoughts become things. You know, whatever you co- consistently b- think about, whatever you consistently think about is actually going to happen. I, I, I firmly believe that. I can attest that for my own self. The things that I've been able to do in my own life that I've positively conceived in my brain, I've been able to make happen. The things that I don't want to happen that I somehow can't seem to get out of my head, they seem, I seem to gravitate towards that unintentionally. I think if everybody had more of a positive, and I'm not here to preach because that's not what this is. It's just more so, like you said, we're noticing this pattern and it's like, we need to get out of that because it's not okay to continue to think about death and continue to talk about it so, so casually. That's not something that we should be talking about on a consistent basis like this. It's just not cool. It's not cool. Yeah, it's, 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 it's disturbing. It's very yeah. disturbing. So, All right. good, good project, but yeah, let's, let's, let's keep it moving. 